Cecil. <laughs> You're looking at James chapter 1, everyone. Um, James, the half-brother of Jesus. Here it is, the word of God for the people of God. And I want to just share a few verses. This is what it says in verse number 1, James. Once you have it, say amen. amen. All right, keep your Bibles open. This is what the word of God says. James was a, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And to the 12 tribes which were scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Well, brothers and sisters, for just a few moments, let me preach and just teach to you. I preach and teach a little bit. I want to talk about that. Count it all joy. Amen. You look at someone on your row and just say, count it all joy. That's right. That's what I want to talk about for just a few moments, brothers and sisters, because James, the half-brother of Jesus, he writes this uh, in his book. And he's writing, of course, as he says to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. And he gives his greetings. He gives his salutations. And in that, he starts right into the meat of his writing. He talks about helping them with the persecution that is taking place with this early church. Early church, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, was unheavy persecution. And the saints of God was going through a very intriguing season of persecution. And so this is what he says unto them. He says to all of those brethren who I'm writing to at this moment, he says, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptation, knowing this, that it is the trying of your faith that is going to work patience. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be uh, perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And this is some very good information, brothers and sisters, to remind the people of God of how we should handle and how we should react to trials that come in life. Must I say, brothers and sisters, that when you look at this particular passage of Scripture, verse number 2 is power-packed with helping us with trials, trials, trials. If you don't like the word trials, well, let's use the word troubles because trials and troubles are first cousins. Actually, they're brothers and sisters. they close family members, and they go well together. And he teaches us here that when you understand trials, number one, he suggests to us that trials, ladies and gentlemen, are destined. Trials are destined. There it is on the screen. Trials are destined. This is what he said. He says, so count it all joy. Here's that word that makes it destined. When you fall into divers, when, not if, it is when, which helps us to understand that trials are destined. The fact of that, he says, when you fall, it speaks into the inevitability of trials, that they are inevitable, that they are going to come. You cannot avoid it. Trials are destined for your every life that you are living. For every day, you are going to face some type of trial. Every person. Don't make no difference how powerful you pray. Don't make no difference how wonderful you worship. Trials are destined. Don't make no difference how terrific you tithe. Don't make no difference how sensational you sing. Trials, beloved, are destined. Hear me one more time now. Don't make no difference how strong you shout or uh, how, 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 how detailed you dance. Trials are going to come. So in other words, Pastor, what you're trying to say? I'm trying to say you can't pray them from coming. You can't worship them from coming. You can't tithe and give them, keep them from coming. You can't sing and stop them from coming. You can't shout or dance and, and, and cause these trials to detail. No, they are coming. 
ladies and gentlemen, because trials, the text says, are destined. But not only does he suggest in verse number two that trials are destined, but then he says trials are diverse. Trials are not only destined in verse number two, but they are also diverse. In other words, he says when you fall into diverse, diverse, different, multicolored, that word means when it comes to the word divers, the word divers either means multicolored, uh, manifold, but it also, in a common term, Brother Kitchen, it means various. And what was understood by trials and trouble is that trouble don't stop troubling to let another trouble trouble you. He says because it is multifaceted and it's multicolored. So what, mean, what it means is trouble or trials are divers, which means it does not take turns with you that you will find yourself having to deal with a variety of things at one time. And someone here is on the edge because you're dealing with multiple things. Some of you are, are on the cusp of cussing, or on, on, on the brink of breaking. Or you're, you're, you're on the edge because you're dealing with multiple things. And he says, I want to teach you, uh, the apostle says, with how to deal with multiple things. Because the, these men that he's writing to, uh, with the persecution, there's different type of persecution that they're facing. They're facing the persecution of those uh, who are against this new Christ. Uh, teaching uh, and they're spreading heresies and they're spread, spreading all types of different uh, doctrines on top of uh, the, 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 the Christology or the, the, the doctrine of Christ and so they're having to deal with that being talked about while at the same time there are those of the Christian faith that are being persecuted and killed and slaughtered and so they got to deal with that and then there are those who are being jailed and stoned so they got to deal with that and then they got to deal with the inner part of having to deal with my own personal faith is this really worth it and and and, and is this gospel that I'm preaching and carrying and that I have I have connected to is this gospel really uh, in my soul and so it's self-evaluation and they're dealing with the trials manifold various trials on different fronts and I'm gonna tell you something brothers and sisters in case you hadn't realized it you have to learn how to deal with multiple stuff at one time one time have you ever have you ever seen uh, uh, that mother who is in the kitchen she got the baby in her hand she got the telephone under this ear and she's also cooking in the kitchen with the other hand that she got free because she's doing what's called multitasking She's able to talk on the phone to her sister while holding the baby and nursing him and then at the same time taking the one hand she got and she's cooking in the kitchen because she's learned how to do multiple things at one time and how that mother does that is the same way you're going to have to learn how to live your life and how to deal with multiple trouble and trials. You're going to have to learn how to deal with it at the house, the challenge at the house while at the same time dealing with the personality conflicts of your children while at the same time you're trying to keep the house stable and pay bills and trying to figure that out while at the same time you're trying to warrant yourself away from all the negativity and all the haters and all of the gossip and all of the mess people bring into your forefront while at the same time you're trying to juggle the changes that's going on in your own body and your own health challenges and while at the same time you're going to be have to worry about your mama and you're going to have to worry about your daddy and your sister going to call you with what's going on with her and then you got to go to work on tomorrow so you got to deal with that drama and all of that stress and all of that foolishness while at the same time your husband want to know well what you gonna cook this week is you gonna cook at all are you gonna do this are you and then you gotta make sure you get the kids to soccer practice and make sure they get to chilling practice because you're dealing with multiple things at one time and Paul said or James says don't be discouraged or dismayed I'm gonna help you to handle your trial he say and I'm gonna help you to handle them because you're gonna have to realize that trials are destined 
but then trials are diverse. But then not only are they diverse, not only are they destined, but they are difficult. Sometimes you just need somebody to pat you on the back and say, I know it's hard. Sometimes you just need somebody to understand that all this stuff I'm dealing with, you know, and they come up and pat you on the back, you know, you are so strong. You are so, oh, I admire your strength. And they don't understand sometimes why they're admiring your strength. You about to break. Because trials are difficult. That yeah, I'm still here. Yes, I'm still trucking through it. Yes, I'm still putting the best foot forward. But I ain't going to lie to y'all and not tell you this ain't hard. And sometimes you need to take the S off your chest, take the cape off your back, and say, this is difficult and this is hard. Being who I am, got to go through what I got to go through, got to deal with what I got to deal with, and y'all don't even know half the story. You just see me when I come out in public, but you never see me behind the closed doors trying to figure out how do you juggle. Trials are difficult. It ain't nothing easy. This is this this is nothing. This this is not this this is not an easy task. And you steady putting the best on the outside, but it ain't easy. And sometimes you want to lay in the arms of the people that think you're strong and just cry and say, I'm catching hell on this one. This is hard. And I want to tell the church today it's okay. Because trials are destined. Trials are diverse. You got it. But trials, I understand, they are difficult. Because he uses the word in verse number two, temptations. And the word temptations, ladies and gentlemen, that, that, that makes it so difficult is translated into the word testing. These diverse or diverse temptations that you are tempted in the midst of all of this. You're not one that can't be tempted. Tempted what, Brown? Tempted to quit? Tempted to say something? Tempted to go off? Tempted to drop it all and say, y'all can have this. Some of y'all would have done that on your job by now if you hadn't looked and seen that the children still got to eat and that your mortgage still got to be paid. Some, some of you, that's the only reason why you're going to get yourself together to go in there on tomorrow morning. But, but because because the, the diver's temptation, the tempting, the test is a difficult test. But here's the sermon, everybody. Here's the sermon. I told you that uh, these trials are destined. I told you, yeah, that they're diverse. I told you that they're difficult. But here's, here's the sermon and my last point. The trials are developing. <laughs> because through all of the diverse, destined difficulties that you face, the trials are developing. That if you don't handle this and go through this, you don't develop. Have you ever, and I know some of y'all are too young for this, but the folk that's really with me, that's least my age and older can, can attest to this, the Polaroid camera that used to give you the picture instantly. And you mess around and put your finger in the wrong place and it blurs the picture and it doesn't develop because you know after the thing come out and it spits it out I know y'all young folk don't know nothing about this but after it spits it out a lot of time we would take it and fan it right so that the picture could come clear and I still got some of them pictures in my old photo album you know from 1995 you know from from the from school you know some of my classmates you understand and and and, and when you understand that it's hard to see a picture that ain't developed 
you don't even know what you have the potential to become until you've developed. You don't even know what you look like in the future until God can send you through the right stuff to develop your picture. So I'm trying to tell you, don't quit yet. Because trials are developing. Because what he says here in this text, verse number three, he says, because it is the trying of your faith that's going to, that, that is going to work with patience. And if you let patience, verse number four, have her perfect work in your life, you're going to be something in the future that you aren't right now. And, and, and here it is. Here it is, everybody. Trials are developing. I got to let you go after this one. Because developing, so you trying to tell me the Lord trying to teach me something? Yes. Because what gives the Lord the right to test you is that he first teach you. And he's going to teach you, then test you. Huh? He's going to teach you, then test you. Trials are designed to teach you something. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Now, Brown, now you better tell me. Don't leave me hanging. What is trials designed to teach me then? Okay, here we go. Number one, according to the text, they are designed to teach us how to, number one, Respond in praise. <laughs> oh, yeah. Trials are designed to teach us, according to the text, how to respond in praise. Here it is. Here it is. I'll show it to you. He says it in verse number two. We're back there. Count it all joy. That what he says here is the count it. When he says count it, now, count it is seen in, in, in two different vernaculars. Number one, the first time I, I looked at this passage, it was a military term to count uh, of what the commanding lieutenant does at detail. Uh, that when he calls all of his troops out of the barracks, he now calls them to stand in order in detail, and he counts them, make them do morning count. Now, that, now that, that, that's one side of counting because counting would bring order. But here's the other side of counting. This word counting in the Hebrew, it simply means, ladies and gentlemen, to contemplate. It's also a math term from, 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 the, from the singleness of I. It is a math term. And in the math term, it means to contemplate or to ponder. Here's a better term. It means in the Hebrew to uh, reconcile. <laughs> All right? Y'all didn't get that? So let, 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 me, let me do it like this. The word count means do the math. Do the math. Because he says... Even though, oh, I like this, you're going through your trials, you ought to at least do the math. Because when you focus on all of the trials, the trials put you in the dump. But when you do the math, and according to financial terms, reconcile your books, when, when you get a chance to look at your uh, income versus your expenditures and in the days of my mom and dad need to balance your checkbook, you'll discover that what this situation is costing you is not more than you got coming in. Which means this situation ain't finna bankrupt you. And it's not finna send you in the negative because when I start counting my good days, y'all ain't, boy, y'all slow, up against my bad days. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I start counting that I do have cancer, but then I start counting up the cost that even though I have cancer, my God has all 
always come through for me. And he has always walked by my side when I do the math. I wish you today would do some math. I wish some of y'all would have done some math before you came to church here when you walked in the door so sad all engulfed by what you're going through and you didn't do the math that God has brought me through more stuff. He didn't brought me over more hills. He didn't brought me through deep valleys. And when I do the math, there's something in my spirit that begins to bubble up. And the joy of the Lord. I wish you'll count. I wish you'll take a moment to count your blessings and realize that your blessings are greater than the burdens. Oh, because I know what's wrong with you. I know what your problem is. I know what's wrong with you. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with you. I'm looking at you. What's wrong with you is the fact of that you have not done the math. And folk who do math, the more they think, then the more they think. See, and, and, and you refuse, as a teacher would tell you, to use your brain. You refuse to use the muscle in between your eyes. Wish I had a prayer in church here. You refuse to do the math. And when you don't do the math and count up the costs and see really how blessed you are, people that don't think are people that don't think. Because you refuse to T-H-I-N-K. So therefore, since you don't T-H-I-N-K, you never T-H-A-N-K. And people that don't ever T-H-A-N-K are those who never T-H-I-N-K. And when I began to think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my good days outweigh my bad days and the joy. I wish you had some joy. Been through a divorce, but you got joy. Then had to file bankrupt, but you got joy. Huh? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Been sick going to doctor after doctor, but your joy is still there. You still excited because you've been doing the math. Amen. Your children acting like they ain't got no good sense. And you've been going through that for a while, but you got to do the math. And when I did the math, the joy. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, I do have some joy. I got it. And I got it because I did the math. And when I did the math, the equation says that what's coming is better than what's been. That my greater days are still in front of me. When I did the math and saw the equation, the equation tilted in the positive and not the negative. Hey, hey, hey. Shake your neighbor's hand one more time and say, do the math, do the math, do the math. Because the trials will teach you how to respond in praise. I'm trying to tell y'all that there ought to be a difference in how the child of God responds to trials and tragedy and the non-child of God responds. A lot of us are responding to tragedy and trials the same way that people who ain't got God respond. They don't have no hope. And some of us act like we don't have none either. But when you understand that trials are designed to teach us how to respond in praise, you realize that they are also designed to cause you, number two, to recall your purpose. Trials will cause you to recall your purpose. Recall the purpose. Because it wasn't until they were going through the trials that verse number three says, a knowing this came up. <laughs> knowing this. And the knowing this had nothing to do with what they had read. 
The apostle Paul, who had sat in the uh, school of academia, and the apostle Paul had sat at the feet of Gamaliel, and had sat at the feet of many scholars, not only had the burning, but he had the learning. Huh? So his knowledge of Christ is backed up by what he studied. Do y'all understand that? But I ain't talking about Paul, I'm talking about James. And James knowing didn't come through books. When you look at the knowing that James is talking about, it came not through education, but it came through experience. Because experience will teach you something that books can't. Ask grandmama how she know the Lord to make a way. Ask grandmama how she know that God will open up a door and he'll be bridge over troubled water. She'll say, baby, I ain't ever read it, but I got the experience. You can't make me doubt him. I got to preach in a little while. I wish y'all would help me get out of here. But I know too much about him. And I know what my Jesus can do. It's all because of the experience. He said, and when you start going through your trials, he says, it will recall your purpose. It will cause you to depend on not what you see, but what you know. Woo! And I'm just praying some of us in here will start remembering and recalling your past experience with Jesus huh and when you start recalling you ain't got to think back far just yesterday what he done huh huh just last week what he did but oh if I keep on going backwards you'll start shouting because it will continue to build upon what you know I tell you, go back five years, Brown. Go back six years to the car accident. Go, go, go back to see how God shielded you and your family. And, and then I'll start talking, and all of a sudden, you'll start saying, that boy knows something about the Lord. It's because of what I've experienced. It's because of what I know about Jesus. Oh, man, you'll get to the place in trials that you ain't pulling your hair out, and you ain't stressing, and your anxiety level ain't going all over the place. It's all because people will say, well, why you? I got a lot of control. Look at you. It, no, no, baby. It's because of what I know. I done, I done been with Jesus long enough. Some of y'all got gray hair. And, I, and, and that's one thing we missing in the church for my generation. Y'all who got all this gray hair, then shut your mouth. Y'all done got all undercover now. Y'all don't talk. Y'all don't witness no more. Amen. The church I came up in, in my grandmother's church, she's a mother on the mother's board at Mount Zion Primitive Baptist Church. They're on the hill in Quincy, Florida, 209 uh, East Crawford Street. And she, amen, was the mother of the mother's board. And then they would get to going in that church, and the mothers and deacons would start walking around shaking folk hands. Amen. And telling them, I know what the Lord can do. Begin to testify. And one time, then they they mess around and grab my hand and they witness to me that tell the son the Lord will save you he'll regenerate your heart and he'll save your soul and the Lord will turn you around young man stick with God and God will elevate you stay humble young boy and they was walking around and shaking them hands but after a while by and by I found myself in the circle with them trying to shake as many hands. Some of y'all don't like me when I tell y'all to go around and shake somebody's hand and tell them this, tell them that. You, you don't come to church to sit down and look like you at a theater. You ought to sometime come here and witness to people about what you know about Jesus. If you don't know nothing, don't say nothing. But if you know that he's a bridge over troubled water, won't you say something? If you know he'll save your soul, won't you say something? If you know he'll turn your life around, won't you open up your big fat mouth and say something? If you know he'll pay your bills, if you know he'll fix your heart, why don't you open up your mouth and tell him, I know he will. Hey, 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 hey. I'm not going to tell you what to say. You tell somebody right now what you know about the Lord. I'll give you 30 seconds. Go ahead and tell them what you know about him. Tell them. Open up your mouth and tell them what you know about him. He'll save you. He'll take you off drugs. 
He'll give you your life back. He'll fix your heart. He'll fix your mind. Come on, tell some people what you know. I've been young and now I'm old. I ain't ever seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. He'll put food on your table. Ah, I know he will. Y'all sit down. I got one more. I got one more. I'm going to let y'all get out of here. I'm going to get you out of here in five minutes. I got one more. I got one more. Come on, get your right hand and say, preacher, give us one more. Give us one more. Okay, 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 okay. Since you asked for it, here it is. He said, he said because what trials would do, it'll cause you to recall your purpose. But then, but then, I'm going home on this one. Trials are teaching you how to remain in place. I'm in this text. Trials and, I, and, 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 and video, that's all we're going to do. I'm, I'm going to do this one and then let's get out of here. Okay? Uh, 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 it teaches you how to remain in place. You don't see it in the text? Let me show it to you. He said because once you recall your purpose by knowing this, he says, the trying or the testing of your faith. Work in patience. Can I give y'all something to take home with y'all? This ain't no homework, but let me just give it to you. A faith that cannot be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. That if your faith can't go through no tests, then your faith can't be trusted in the test. But if God is testing your faith right now, if he is testing your faith, it is the, yeah, trying of your faith that worketh patience. Because what patience does, it teaches you how to remain in place. The word patience, let patience, verse 4, have her perfect work. Don't miss this and I'm going to the house. Uh, going to St. Paul. He, he says, he says, he says, uh, so Brown, tell him what patience is. Because patience does not mean that while you're going through, you sit in a corner with your arms folded. Or you sit idly by. But what the word patience mean, in the original, it means to remain under. The word patience means to stay in place. In other words, because the reason why you stay in place is because you are waiting. You want God to move you out of your trial, but you got to wait on him until he comes to rescue you. And so through that whole entire period, your faith is being tested. And your faith is now connected to working your patience. And by the time you finish this waiting cycle, patience, verse number four says, will have had its perfect work. That the areas in your life that are gray and the areas in your life that's not complete Patience will have made a work on it and made that area that was imperfect, perfect. Okay, okay. And so remaining under, which is what patience means, is the same thing as a weightlifter. So for all of my weightlifters, I understand you under the bar. The weight is on both sides. And since the weight is on both sides, come on, where's my exercising people at? Now I do squats with it. But at some point, the weight starts getting heavy. 
and the weight starts weighing on me. Which is the trial and the burden that I'm under. So now, do I drop the bar and don't complete my reps? No. There is a technique that patience teaches you while you're under the pressure and the weight. Patience starts saying, uh-uh, uh-uh, you can't drop the bar. Uh-uh, you can't quit. Uh-uh, you can't throw in the towel. Your mind says, it's getting heavy. I can't do this. I'm waiting on the Lord to come rescue me, and it seems like he ain't coming. I prayed about it, and I prayed about it for six months now, and nothing, nothing is happening. I'm tired. I'm tired of dealing with the same thing. So after a while, your legs feel like they're going to buckle. So what patience teaches you, so that you can continue waiting, patience says, no, when you come up this time, lock your legs. Because you're under the pressure and patience says, when you know who you're waiting on and you know he may not come when you want him. I see y'all. But every delay is not a deny. And that he might not show up when I want him. But he's always showed up just when I needed him most. It'll cause you to lock your legs. It'll cause you to refuse to buckle under the pressure. I'll see y'all later, but I want to give a shout out to every one of y'all that's in a waiting pattern right now. And you're waiting on God to deliver. And you're waiting on God to come through for you. And these burdens and trials are getting so heavy. But pastor came today to tell you I got a word from the Lord. And I heard from James this morning. And James told me that be patient. That God is just testing your faith. And while he's testing your faith, he says something is happening to your patience. God is stretching your patience. God, to whereas he's showing you that the longer I let you stay where you are, he says the stronger you're getting and the more determined you're getting. Because you're not waiting on Willie the wino. You're not waiting on your next check to come. But uh, you're waiting on the Lord. And you heard somewhere in the word of God to wait on the Lord. And be of good courage. And the Lord will strengthen your heart. Uh, I heard another one say in Isaiah chapter 40. He said that if you wait on God. God will let you mount up with wings like an eagle. He'll let you run and not be weary. He'll let you walk and not faint. So uh, his advice to you is wait, I say, on the Lord. Because what the Lord is doing, he is working your patience. Because after a while, after he gives you, yes, the, the recall for your purpose, and after he causes you to remain in place, shake your neighbor's hand and say, don't go nowhere. Don't get divorced yet. Remain in place. Don't act a fool just yet. Remain in place. Don't quit your job just yet. Remain in place. I know you don't even feel like getting up in the morning and you don't feel like even dealing with it on tomorrow. But the Lord told me to tell you have some patience and remain in place. Because you remember what happened the last time that you moved too fast. You remember what happened the last time that you went without God saying go. I ain't got no help in this church. And you got to learn from the last test that God is, had put you through. <laughs> Have I got any help in this church? So why don't you just nudge your neighbor and say, remain under. 
stay in place. Don't you buckle. Because the temptation to buckle is going to be great on you. But you ought to tell your neighbor right now, I ain't going to buckle and I ain't going to move. I ain't going to do nothing until the Lord comes and turn my situation around. I'll see y'all. God bless your heart. But I come to tell you one more thing. Because when you remain under and when you remain in place, he said the reward is going to be your production. Look at your neighbor and say your reward is going to be your production. He said because let faith and let patience have her perfect work. He didn't say let him have it. He didn't say let it have it. But he said let her have her perfect work. Which means it got the ability uh, to produce in you. It has the ability to birth something in you. Y'all don't hear me what I'm saying. Y'all help the preacher get out of here. And tell your neighbor it's going to pay off after a while. Tell him you're going to birth something in this next season that you didn't have in this season because patience is having her perfect work come can i get the church to say her in other words you got something in you that's going to produce it's going to give you the results that you're looking for you can't go into your future without what patience is going to give you you can't go on your next job adventure without what patience is going to teach you. You can't even go to the next level until you get everything God got for you right now. Look at somebody on your road, Lord have mercy, and tell that person, I'm going to wait on God. Because every time I wait on him, he will reward my faithfulness. So I'll see y'all later. If the storm don't cease, if the wind don't stop blowing, everything is going to be all right because my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Touch your neighbor. Wrap your arm around him for me as we go. And say, neighbor, in the meantime, just count it all joy. Put your best praise on it. Put your best shout on it because soon or later it's going to turn in your favor. Soon at the while, God's going to deliver and God's going to turn it around. He's going to make your enemies be your footstool. Count it all joy. Soon or later, uh, God is going to work it for your good. Do I have a witness? Can you testify? To at least one more person and tell them I decided to wait on Jesus the storm may rise wind may blow the lightning may flash the burden may get heavy tears may come down my face my head may hurt sometimes but I decided to, I ain't going nowhere I ain't gonna find me another church I ain't going to find me another house. I ain't going to get no more husbands. I'm going to just wait on God. And when you wait on him, won't he come through? Won't he make a way? Won't he lift the burden? Won't he give you a breakthrough? Won't he lighten your load? Won't he come see about you? Yeah! Yeah! I got to go to St. Paul in a little while, but I'm at greater. Yes, he will. The door are open. We got to go. Yes, he will. Telling you what I know. Can I tell you what I know? Won't you tell your neighbor? I'm going to tell you what I know. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yeah, he will. Yeah. 
The doors are open. We got to go.